Hello friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, we are going to see how to configure the GRE tunnel link on Palo Alto Firewall. Before we actually jump onto the video session, uh, we'll just have a look on the release notes on the Palo Alto website. So I'm on the 9.0 version, uh, but the latest and greatest version will be 9.1. Let's have a look on the 9.0 version, what it talks about on the new features that has been introduced. Just click on the new features and I'm just clicking on the networking features just to get to know uh, what are the networking features that are uh, newly introduced. If you look at here, uh, GRE tunneling support. Yes, this is supported from 9.0. Any prior version from 9.2 does not support GRE tunneling. So whenever you wanted to uh, configure GRE tunneling, you need to make sure that GRE supports only from 9.2 and you need to be prepared to do your hardware upgrade from whatever version, prior version you have currently to 9.2. So this is the very much uh, needed uh, item to think of as a pre-requested. GRE channel generic routing encapsulation so it is similar to ipsec tunneling i mean we know that there are different uh, types of uh, tunneling protocols are available GRE is one of which uh, this can be used when you want to send all of your uh, traffic to a uh, like, uh, software as a service cloud providers or uh, when you wanted to uh, send all of your traffic to a partner network so during those constraints, you can choose GRE could be the best option. The biggest difference I see between uh, GRE and IPsec, GRE has more throughput to support, wherein uh, IPsec has some limitations around. Based on the theoretical knowledge, IPsec supports per tunnel 250 Mbps throughput, but GRE supports up to 2 Gbps. It's not as similar as to IPsec, so within IPsec, we have phase one, phase two covering uh, data channel and uh, the encryption methodologies. But uh, in the GRE tunneling, we don't have such concept. We are just encapsulating actual data traffic with the additional packet as an encapsulated uh, information and uh, sending it through the blind internet traffic. If you if you wanted to send your internet traffic to a cloud service provider, the GRE tunneling could be a best option because it has a higher throughput and uh, when the traffic originates from the source and uh, before it get uh, reaches the destination the encapsulated packet will not be seen by anyone on the internet so this is the quick uh, simplest way of the diagram for the jerry tunnel link configuration if you look at router one is on the source side router two on the destination side and we are going to build a GRE tunnel in between source side has one public IP address and destination has different public IP address where in which each end has individual or separate tunnel interfaces tunnel interfaces uh, should have configured to talk within the same subnet and same subnet mask so here the source network has 10.1.1.1 slash 30 as a tunneling interface IP address where in which the destination has 10.1.1.2 slash 30 as a tunnel interface. Okay, let's get into the uh, actual session now. Okay, like I mentioned, the firewall should be 9 or anything above version to support a GRE tunneling feature. So my firewall has 9.0.2 version. As a first step, we need to configure the tunnel interface. Go to network, go to tunnel, and you, all you just need to create add in this example i'm going to use the existing interface what i have so i just named it as wi-fi to zscaler pry virtual router router virtual router would be default only and i'm going to uh, have the separate zone for it zone is must before i mean if you don't have any zones that is uh, currently available all you just need to click new zone and name that zone here further for you to add those interfaces so over here, I'm going to uh, assign this uh, GRE zone for the tunnel interfaces. Before we create this uh, tunnel interface, let's go back and see what is there. For the GRE tunnel zone, 
um, I have added all the tunneling interfaces. So this is predominantly for the GRE traffic and by hence I had added uh, all the tunnel interface. Okay, let's go back on the interface, selected the default virtual router security zone, which I have created and then IP address. So this is where the, um, the private IP address of your tunnel interface should need to be configured. Usually this IP address either provided by your uh, provider, I mean uh, the destination end. So in this case, Zscaler acting as a provider. So they will provide you the source side IP address and they will also have their destination end IP address. So I'm talking about the source side tunnel interface IP address. So this one and this one will be provided by your uh, provider itself. Even if it is your partner, either you or partner will uh, make a determination of using uh, the tunnel interface IP addresses. In this scenario, like I mentioned, I'm going to send all of my internet traffic to uh, Zscaler. So by hence, I'm going to receive or use the IP address provided by the Zscaler itself. Okay, so I have configured the tunnel interface IP address. Nothing else we need to configure here. Rest everything is same. In the next step, click on the JRE tunnel. Once you're on the JRE tunnel, you need to click add. Since I'm going to explain with the current configuration what I have, I had edited uh, Gscaler Wi-Fi primary. All you just need to select public IP interface, meaning the outside interface where you have the internet uh, configured. And then a local IP address, choose the local IP address of your um, outside interface. And then peer IP address is nothing but your provider or uh, the peer the next of uh, public IP address and then the tunnel interface that you have just created in the previous step. Rest everything is same. Uh, just click uh, the keep alive as the keep alive messages need to be sent back and forth on the uh, GRE tunnel just to maintain the aliveness of uh, the GRE tunnel. Then comes the main step. Uh, on your next step, you need to uh, go to policies. Click on the policy based routing or policy based forwarding. This is where you will determine which source network should need to be traversed through your GRE tunnel. Click on the policy, add policy based routing, click add and just name it uh, whatever you want and select the source network what you want it to be allowed. And in this case, the source zone would be Wi-Fi. I want my source network of Wi-Fi to be traversed through my GRE tunnel. So destination, any, applications, any, and services, also any. Forwarding, on the forwarding action, uh, action should be forward, yes, where on the egress interface, the tunnel interface that you have created in the previous step. Next hop, now we don't have any next stop, on, but here we are just forwarding it to this interface. So what will happen as soon as you commit this change, the policy or the policy based routing mentioned source networks will start to traverse through this tunnel 3.300 network. And then next one monitor is nothing but we are just configuring the IPSLA for monitoring the next hop. Remember in the first step, we created the tunnel interface with IP address of 172.18.2.0. 208.17. That is our end IP address, where in which the next hop would be dot uh, 18, just next next to that IP. So what it does, it will start to monitor this IP address availability through ICMP polling. If in case this particular IP address is not reachable, it will disable this rule. So that is what the main intention of this monitor. If in case the GRE tunnel, the, the next stop is not reachable, the GRE tunnel will, will go down and eventually your traffic uh, from this uh, source network, what you have configured here, will not to traverse through this GRE tunnel, where in which it will directly go to your outside interface and go to internet. So why? Just to ensure that you, if you lost your GRE tunnel at the same time, you can still traverse uh, the internet traffic for the source networks. That's the main intention of it. That's a JRE tunneling configuration has completed. But just in case, if you want to build the, the secondary tunnel for redundancy purpose, you can still configure it and you can make use of the policy based routing for your uh, redundancy purposes. So in this case, I have created the secondary tunnel as well using a different source IP. It means a different public IP interface of my firewall, but to a different destination of a Zscaler. And I'm using a, a separate tunnel interface for that just in case if you wanted to see the tunnel interface for a tunnel 
dot 400 using a different uh, private IP for that. Okay, so here if we go back to the uh, policies, like I mentioned in the previous step, using a monitor over here, it is similar to IPSLA. If in case your primary tunnel or first tunnel goes down, it will look for the next availability of a tunnel or next policy based routing in my list. The next policy based routing on the sequence is for the second tunnel available. As soon as the reachability of this IP is unreachable, then it will start to flow the traffic through a secondary tunnel. So this is how you will control the traffic for ZRE tunnel to go from your source network. If in case the primary tunnel goes down, automatically your uh, secondary tunnel will start to take that traffic and send it to your destination. What will happen if a primary tunnel comes back? Yes, uh, in that case, automatically the IPSLA uh, monitoring capability of uh, the primary tunnel, as soon as it, it sends that it is available, then the primary tunnel will take precedence and it will automatically sit, start sending the traffic to primary tunnel. That's all uh, for the GRI tunnel. Just for uh, your own purposes or make use of uh, your uh, convenience, I'm going to show a couple of commands what you should use on your day-to-day -day basis to monitor the GRI tunneling traffic. Once you log into your uh, uh, parallel to firewall, using a party use a command just to see the tunnel interface status show interface and then a tunnel interface name once you input that you will see the status of the tunnel as up as many number of uh, tunnel interfaces you have it will show all those tunnel interfaces status and both of them are available as up status currently but uh, at the same time we will also see show pdf role all so this will show the status of all policy based routing role here here if you see the uh, for, i mean i have shown you in the previous step uh, the uh, uh, pbf role goes by top down approach if in case the primary or the first id uh, in the list goes down the status will be shown here as down at the same time the traffic will start to flow through next tunnel so right now both the tunnel status are showing up and the traffic is actively traversing through the primary term that's all friends i think i i have given you the info information around uh, how to configure the gra tunnel in palo alto i hope this new video is useful for you and i will make sure to share all the references used in this uh, video on the comment section uh, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, share this videos if you have any specific questions and uh, don't hesitate to put it in the comment section and i will catch you in the next video thank you so much